Well, as of October 1st, the HOV lane on I-85 through Gwinnett and into DeKalb goes away, and that lane becomes an express toll lane. Another day, another traffic jam along I-85 northbound as commuters press their way through. Many trying to avoid the new express lane, some calling it too costly to ride. The average total toll during the morning rush hour was $5.50. I just don't think it's worth gas already sky high. I don't want to have additional costs. This is for exclusive people with exclusive money. The history of the I-85 express lane project is long and sorted. When we looked at I-85, um, the ability to add new capacity in, on that corridor is just not there. And we were too late to look at land use because needless to say, all the businesses had grown up around the I-85 corridor. So the only strategy left for uh, Georgia on that corridor was really looking at a demand management strategy. How can we take a lane on I-85 and use it differently to get people quicker to Atlanta? It can be frustrating to be stuck in traffic. One of the comments we get is, if I can just keep moving. I think people choose to use express lane because it is a choice. It's for convenience. We offer reliable trip time, which I see happen every day. And so I think because it's a choice, it gives them an option to do something different if the road is congested. It gives them flexibility to be able to decide what's of value to me. Um, if you value your time, if you value making it home to your family a little bit faster than what you normally would, you enjoy the Peach Path program. The major players in this project were the former governor, Governor Sonny Perdue, the State Road and Tollway Authority, the Georgia Regional Transportation Authority, and of course the Georgia Department of Transportation. This was quite a unique situation also for all four state agencies to come together recognizing the need for us to have something, have this demonstration project within this quarter, coming together, going to Washington, D.C., and garnering these funds. We were actually trying to solve the overutilization of the ID5 HOV lane. Um, so we had a lot more people in that lane, and we weren't meeting the federal requirements of 45 miles an hour. So when we got the grant for the HOV lanes years and years ago, that was the whole intent, is to have one lane traveling in each of the HOV corridors at 45 miles an hour. So how did we do that? Uh, how do we get back to 45 miles an hour and provide reliable trip time to Georgia citizens? The concept behind dynamic pricing is let's vary the amount of the toll in response to the traffic conditions. As traffic is worse in the corridor in general, demand to use the I-85 express lanes goes up. So correspondingly, the price goes up. But as traffic conditions return to more normal levels, the price comes down. So it's a very interesting balancing act. It keeps people from paying too much when it's not necessary, or paying too little and then losing the value of the road because it's a traffic jam just like the other lanes. One of the biggest problems with the, with the project originally was enforcement. How do you enforce uh, the white line crossings along this roadway? You have a lane that's to be told, separated by two double white lines, separated from the general purpose lanes. How do you enforce people from just crossing into this roadway? If people don't perceive that you're enforcing double white lines, how, how are we enforcing occupancy, and let alone how do we enforce uh, toll payment how is it fair for people that pay a toll if they see people crossing the one line? So for us, the innovation was the concept of gantry control access, where we set up toll gantries every half mile, where we can tell if people are missing gantries or not along the roadway. If you get into the road and you miss a certain number of gantries, then uh, we can say at some point you must have come across the white lines to get in our toll facilities, and that's how we, we sent out a violation on, the, on that premise. For example, enforcement, we use ALPR, which is Automatic License Plate Reader. It's actually cameras mounted on the back of a police car, and it reads every tag that goes by and checks it against a database. They have a list, a DOR list that with stolen cars, Amber Alerts, and then also have a list from CERTA if you declare yourself a non-toll, which is three or more people. Um, the officer can see that immediately on their screen and, and count how many people are in the car. And if you don't comply with what your status is, you're gonna get pulled over. We had anticipated that people would need time to get used to the roadway. And so we knew it would be some hurdles and 
possibly a bumpy start. And we knew that one of the things we had to do was definitely lead with data. And so every single working day in October and November, we sent out data releases on how many people used the lane, the number of trips in the lane, the lowest fare, the highest fare, the amount of time people saved that actually used the roadway. And we did that every day. And we knew that as we continued to feed data to the people that wanted to know about it, the tides would turn and people would begin to use it. We had at launch 75,000 transponders issued and now we're at about 168,000 new peach passes since registration officially opened in June 2011. What attracted me most to the Peach Pass was the ability to get to work faster. In the mornings, we're able to work out before we leave for work. Um, and in the afternoons, it allows us to spend quality time doing the things that we love. I can't tell you how many times I've told um, my boss, I couldn't have this job if we didn't have a Peach Pass. If I, couldn't, if I didn't have the express lane to get where I need to go, I couldn't work here. This project is changing the lives of citizens by giving them a choice to use to get somewhere faster. A choice that they never had before, a way to go pick up your grandmother at the airport on time so she's not fussing at you. This project is affecting people in the business world by allowing employees to actually get to work on time and have a better commute. I always think about my son and getting home to the baseball game and make, making the baseball game. And most importantly, you know, just not wasting time. Uh, I hate to sit in traffic. Some mornings it's an hour and a half, and I end up working in the car. We shouldn't have to work in the car. We should be able to get to work in a reliable manner. The future of Atlanta's roadways includes a lot more managed lanes. We do not have the level of federal funding that we have had over the years. We have a need to manage the facilities that we have. We can't expand, we can't add more lanes because we just don't have the funding. There is always a need for us to do something to address traffic congestion. This is something that affects quality of life. It is something that affects people's ability to spend time with their families. It affects people's ability to get to work on time, to get to areas where you are able to find employment. It touches everyone's life. And so that creates even a greater need for us to seek out opportunities, for us to look at alternatives. This is all about choices. It's not about having a particular road or particular lane that has a price. It's not just building our way out of the roads, but how do we partner up with transit? How do we partner up with the common goal of trying to move people reliably?